And I thought that it might be helpful to put up a little table with a few values that shows the, the change constant for the freezing point and the change constant for the boiling point in centigrade degrees per molal concentration, in other words, moles per kilogram of solvent. And for a number of solvents, now water, of course, is a very common solvent, but we also have benzene, ethanol, acetic acid, carbon tetrachloride, and chloroform. Notice we have the normal freezing points, we have the normal boiling points, and then we have the constants that, that, that uh, control or that, that form the change in the freezing point here and the change in the boiling point. What's interesting to note that in all cases, the constant for the freezing point is larger than the constant for the boiling point. The difference can be as much as about oh, almost 4 to 1 for water, uh, kind of 2 to 1 for benzene, and in other cases it's maybe a 50% larger number for the freezing point change than it is for the boiling point change. That of course has a lot to do with the interactive forces between the solvent molecules, the, sol the solute molecules, and then the interaction between the two. Uh, notice that with water the difference is very significant. Also notice some cases there's a very significant change to the freezing point like for benzene and so you probably don't want benzene by itself because it will freeze at 5.5 degrees centigrade so by adding some solute in there you can really lower the freezing point of benzene by quite a bit which makes it a more practical substance under that circumstance. So by knowing what their freezing points are and then knowing how easily or how difficult it would be to change the freezing or boiling points uh, you can actually control at what temperature they will freeze or boil for practical use by simply adding a certain amount of solute based upon those constants. So again, not a lot of information here, but just enough to see how you can compare these things between different solvents and how knowing these constants can really help you make a substance that will be more um, resilient to freezing at temperatures that you don't want them to freeze or boil at temperatures that you don't want them to boil. And so just a quick overview of some various constants about that.